Hey guys, I'm going to start you off here. Hope you're doing well. Hope you are um, kind of surviving this crisis. And, you know, if you're um, going outside protecting yourself, um, I wanted to talk about a different little thing today. These are different protists. So remember, we talked yesterday about protists being single cell type um, critters, and they can be animal like, they can be plant like, and they can also be fungus like. And these critters all have a nucleus, so they're all eukaryotic. And I think yesterday we talked about the animal ones, and I showed you some videos on those. Today I'd like to focus a little bit more on the plant-like protist and also some of the slime molds. Now I did also link a video on Classroom that brings you to a totally different um, video, and that one's pretty neat. It's all on like slime molds and how they can like solve mazes or how they reproduce. So um, it's done by a totally different biologist, about as long as this video is probably going to be. It's about 10 minutes. So um, it's totally worth checking out um, after you watch this one. So that should be linked on Classroom as well. Uh, as far as this goes, let's start off with plant-like protists. So they are going to be things that I've already showed you. They, like this one, Volvox. Now Volvox is a pretty sweet little protist that bumbles around. Um, using a whole lot of flagella and this particular type of algae is green in color and you know what it does it, it actually like floats around like this and you can actually see individual little cells here um, when it comes into certain focuses and it, Volvox is basically like an apartment building of cells or a colony of them so they're all individuals but they they kind of you know, swim around together in this big bumbling ball of, of shape. So these things trap sunlight, they're autotrophs, and they, they make um, sugar with that sunlight energy. Now, um, one of the other pretty cool um, types of algae out there, actually one of my favorites, is called diatoms. And diatoms, I think, are a really, really gorgeous type of algae. And they really grow in aquatic environments, especially like new ones. And they are the base of a, a lot of food chains out there. Um, you can see that they can come in all sorts of shapes and different sizes. Uh, I also think they look extremely colorful and really beautiful in their own way. I In class, we would have scraped off like um, some of the glass on the turtle tank or one of the fish tanks. What looks like what grows kind of brown on the fish tank is actually these diatom algae. And the neat thing about them is each one of these shapes that you see is actually made of glass. And that's why when you shine light through them, you get kind of an array of different colors because they secrete this kind of skeleton, this glass skeleton or shell on the outside of their bodies. And so that's what you're seeing here in this electron um, microscope image here. Right? It's a glass shell made by the algae itself. And because of that, it reflects light in all sorts of different ways and just makes for beautiful, beautiful looking things underneath a microscope. Um, these again are the base of the food chain. So if you have an algae eater like um, a Placostomus or snails or shrimp, those things are definitely going to be feeding on this type of algae. And that's where they get their food. And then that energy that they have is then given to bigger things, bigger fish, um, and then things that ultimately you might end up uh, eating as well. So um, algae are important for, for trapping that sunlight energy and, and starting off our food chains. And maybe one that you've heard of a little bit more frequently than diatoms would be something like kelp. Um, kelp is one of those algae that we eat directly. Um, a lot of times sushi rolls and things like that will have um, seaweed in them, and that seaweed is actually a lot of times kelp. They can grow quite large. Um, you've heard of kelp forest if you've seen movies like Finding Dory or something like that. Um, but they kind of exist in a similar sense of like a big giant colony rather than one entire organism working together. So this is a type of what we'd call brown algae. And then one of my favorite algaes is actually called coralline algae. And coralline algae grows in tropical waters, so warmer waters than kelp does. And it has this beautiful pink to red to purple color, depending on the type of algae that we're talking about. And this algae is really, really high in calcium. So it grows more like a crust or like a rock than the kelp does. There's another type of green algae in this particular shot, and this is an anemone. And then you can see all the, the coralline algae here. So again, you got multiple type of algaes in just this one shot. 
Um, but it's a real good sign of a healthy reef, um, real good sign of high calcium in the water, which is needed to, to make new corals. So you might go to a pet store or an aquarium store where they have some fish, and if they have saltwater stuff, you might see pink coralline algae growing on the rocks or the glass within that uh, aquarium. So here's one in an aquarium. You can see the blue background and all the pink on the rocks. So that's actually a producer. It's taking light and making sugar from it. So when it does die, it turns kind of white and just leaves the calcium behind. It won't be pink anymore. Just a really pretty algae. I do like it. I think it's pretty. So let's go back to our notes. And you can take a second to get there if you haven't already. And let's add a couple things to our notes. You can pause it if you need to get there. But I'm going to add um, that these guys are um, producers, which means they are autotrophs, which means they make their own food. And they use sunlight to do that. Make their, oops, IR, own food. So they do that by a process called photosynthesis, right? We talked about that at the beginning of the year. Okay. Some of them can move. Um, some of them don't. You know, it just depends. So that's probably where I'd go with that one. A lot of times, maybe I'd add in here like the base uh, of many food chains. Um, this is where the, the energy starts, you know. So the next group I'd like to talk about is the fungal-like slime molds. And I'm going to just show you some pictures here because my last video I just made gotten a little bit of trouble because of copyright stuff because I looked at YouTube and got some sweet time-lapse stuff. But here's what I'll do. I'll say that these things grow on and within their food. And this entire thing that you are looking at here is one cell. It's quite large. Um, and how it communicates is really, really kind of unknown. Uh, how it moves materials, it seems to pulsate its body, its cell body, to move materials from one side of a cell to another. But it, it grows within and on its food. And its main, I guess, um, ecological niche is to take dead, decaying matter, and it's going to digest it and eat it and then leave behind waste products that are usable by things like other plants and stuff. So it's actually kind of a, a good nature recycler. And um, there, I urge you to take a video or look at the video that I posted on Classroom that um, there's another biologist who studies these and she um, talks about them in a little bit more detail than I'm going to. It's, it's pretty neat to, to, to take a look at it. So I'm gonna go back to my notes now and go here and say that these guys also eat food, but they, they are consumers, but they grow in it, um, grow on and in their food. Um, they don't really move um, like the animal-like ones. They kind of like, um, I guess the, the way that they'd move, I would call it kind of pseudopod-like. Um, they just squeeze their insides um, to, to kind of like push their body to a new place. They actually kind of more like grow. Um, so maybe pseudopods is the wrong thing. They like grow to move, right? It's, it's kind of weird. They're just kind of like a giant blob. Um, but I would not really call them like moving in the sense that the animal like protists like actually swim around with a tail or something like that. They don't really do that. Um, yeah, kind of crazy. I would also say, let's, let's call them nature's recyclers. Okay. They help recycle our waste and, and dead material. So it's not just staying around forever. So I think, um, if you have that stuff on your notes, you're in good shape. Um, again, take a look at that, um, wired video that I posted on classroom and, uh, yeah, stay safe out there. Have a good day.